there's your problem. Hey you quarantined robot fans, today we're going to fix the nagging wheel alignment issue that plagues all Power Wheels Jeeps. The main issue here is that these two white pieces of plastic, which are called the steering knuckles, have way too much movement and wiggle between them. The goal is to remove as much of this extra movement as possible and keep them tensioned together, then the wheels will stay more stationary as they turn. A lot of this will just be reinforcing and replacing the thin injection molded plastic which is getting a little bit worn out. So if we look here we have our axle coming off of the wheel. This makes a 90 degree turn and comes out through the blue plastic and is secured with a white push nut. So the force applied to this metal axle has been slowly wearing down the thin plastic hole that it's going through, making the hole bigger, and now the axle has a lot of extra wiggle. So that will be the first thing that we reinforce. To do this we want to remove the wheels and the entire steering assembly from the Jeep, and these are both held on with push nuts. To remove the push nuts, just pop the plastic cap off, then grab some vice grips and crush the nut. Once it's been crushed a couple times, it slides off the axle pretty easily. These aren't really reusable, so always make sure you have some extras. The assembly is also attached to the steering wheel and this comes off pretty easily with a Phillips head screwdriver. To reinforce the worn out holes I'm going to use a bar of 6061 aluminum. It's easy to cut, easy to drill with just basic tools and will add a ton of strength. I cut it down to size and drilled a 12mm hole near the top for the main axle. Then I drilled two additional 5mm holes into the plastic as close to the center line as I could possibly eyeball. I then traced those holes onto the aluminum and drilled out a matching 5mm hole. Then I secured the aluminum to the Jeep with two M5 screws and some lock nuts and boom, reinforced holes. Taking a look at the steering assembly, it's kind of more of the same issue. The steering knuckle is a very thin injection molded plastic. They put all these cavities in the mold to save cost and what you end up with is a really flimsy piece of plastic holding your wheels on. You can see here it's getting easily worn down by the metal axle, but the biggest offender in all of this assembly is the rivet here that secures it to the metal. This rivet gives it a free spinning action, which is what you want for the wheels, but it's at the cost of a lot of slop in the joint. So I'm going to 3D print a new solid knuckle to fix these issues. Here we can see the 3D printed part. It's mostly exactly the same. The 3D print here is completely solid though, which will eliminate a lot of the potential flex. Another key difference is these bearings, which I have on the front and recessed in the back. So if we look at the way the original knuckle is mounted to the metal bar, there is a rivet, which has a, if you look closely here, you could see there is a little raised circular piece, which this piece kind of rotates around and the rivet just goes through all of that. So what I've done is just replace that white circular piece with a bearing. And what that will allow me to do is really tighten things up and use some real hardware to secure this joint. Okay, and with that installed, we can see it has a nice free rotation, but also there is no play in here at all. This is a nice rigid joint. If we compare it again to the other side, which does also spin very freely, that comes at the cost of this. And that's just the difference between using a very inexpensive rivet to hold it on versus using a slightly more expensive bearing system, actually two bearings, but you can see that we have a really nice joint here. With our build going remarkably smooth so far, it's time to reinstall our steering assembly and ah, there it is, a problem. Looks like the piece of aluminum I used was a bit too thick and we don't have enough axle poking through to secure our push nuts on, so I used my CNC to thin that out a little bit. Obviously, if you're doing this yourself, you don't need to do all of this. I will put a link in the description to a thinner piece of aluminum, which will fit just fine. After that is taken care of, we can reinstall our steering assembly by securing the two push nuts. At this point, our steering assembly is really rigid and all of that extra wiggle and slop is gone, but as things begin to wear out from usage, they may get loose again. So I'm going to install a turnbuckle between the two knuckles. My 3D print included some holes to fit a cable through. This is a braking cable from a bicycle which I looped around one end of a turnbuckle I purchased from Home Depot, fed that cable through the two knuckles and crimped it off at the other end of the turnbuckle using some standard bike cable crimps. Now as things begin to loosen I can just tighten the turnbuckle to re-tension the knuckles. You could make a strong argument that this is completely unnecessary, but then again, so is supercharging of power wheels, yet here we all are. 
All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. I hope any one of these measures will help you straighten out the wheels on your Jeep. The difference is immediately noticeable when driving. Just the sound the wheels is making is so much cleaner and there is a definite speed increase from the reduced drag of the wheels. So that's a huge plus. Speaking of speed, I'm doing one more video on this Jeep. I'm going to add in a soft start feature on our 24 volt setting in hopes of saving our precious gearbox. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time.